Alexa, I'm home. How much easier or interesting will things be if you could get all your devices or home appliances working just by talking to them? Well, this emerging reality is called the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things, IoT, is a catch-all term for the growing number of electronics that aren't traditional computing devices, but are connected to the Internet to send data, receive instructions, or both. With the concept of Internet of Things, we are increasingly getting used to connecting everyday devices in our homes to the Internet and to each other to make the places we live and work more comfortable, economical and safe. Well, this week's guest, Cesar Keluro, founder of Nanocentric Technologies, discusses how economies can benefit from IoT. Cesar, glad to have you on Tech Trends today. Yeah, it's nice meeting you, CFA. It's been a while. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, so tell us, um, what is IoT? Okay, IoT is a, is a sensor network of smart devices, you know, that enables people application systems to collect and share data. It's uh, one of the most amazing technologies of those times, enable us to capture data and, you know, and uh, deploying that data to improve business outcomes. It's something inspiring, you know, having given us the privilege to make um, access to out of reach places to enable us to gather sensitive data and deploy that data for business um, process automation and to you know to drive profitable outcomes for for businesses, it's um an amazing time to to exploit this technology. Having realized that you know we have privilege to be you know deploying sensitive applications, you know enabling us to drive conversations around how do we improve, improve business process and how do we transform you know our pain points into data forms you know that that improves collective business decisions making. Yes, I mean you said a lot of things, right? But okay, let, let's let's look at some of the use cases of IoT. Um, how can IoT be beneficial? Okay, um, one one of the one of the experiences we've we've had in our conversation with our partner is this: we realized that the Dangote refinery, um, a greenfield project, you know, we realized that um, such kind of project, you know, should utilize digitalization. And when I mean digitalization, it's um, it's easy for you to build or for you to embed IoT into refiners of that sort because it's green feed. So you can begin to build from ground as you're building the whole fiscal infrastructure. You can create a digital twin, enabling you to, you know, to collect what they call predictive insight on how to improve maintenance, either periodically or set in certain forms, in order to, you know, capture the, the whole process of the of the refiner itself. And to you know create better outcomes for business decision making, and the case the point is how we you know plant IoT devices, you know IoT sensor devices to capture different parameters or different data points that we want to you know grab off so we can understand the whole way the refinery works for optimization purposes. Okay, so you mentioned uh, you know that of a big business, but I'm just also wondering how about the startup, the SME, the small businesses. What are some of the use cases for, for them? Okay, for regarding small businesses, we, we can look at inventory management itself, you know. Having having some sort of IoT IoT devices, you know, in your inventory store can give you live stream about the state of things, the state of your your inventory. Um at what level are they now? Are we seeing a decline in certain number of goods? Are we seeing um an upsurge in an uptick in certain kind of products you're, you're, you're selling in the marketplace. We get to find out around how we can optimize what we have in the store. And the, the fact is, with data, you can do an amazing thing. You know, um, one of the, the things that I sort of wonder about is how would you describe the IoT industry in Nigeria? Is it growing? Is it stagnant? Is it still in, 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 at the infancy stage? What would you say? Okay, at this point in time, we've seen a lot of um, upsurge in consumer IOTs, and that's what, that's what we call wearables. You know, having streams of data by your fitness states. You know, we're seeing a lot of um, lot of information around that. A lot of applications in that space itself. You know, people have a lot of IOT devices on them. You know, helping them to uh, look at the states of, of of their bodies. 
and that's the consumer IoT space itself. We've seen an upsurge in that area. But the transformation we've seen in our market is the deployment of industrial IoT, which is an exciting thing in its own. We, we consider consumer IoT to be um, to be overhyped because um, we're not looking at solving real problems. The shift in conversation is taking us to IO, industrial IoT, which basically addresses industry concern and basically improves economic outcomes for, for people. Yeah, okay, you, you talked about uh, industrial IoT and the like. So now, I mean, educate us more, but I'm thinking about is, you know, what percentage in a typical IoT project, for example, what percentage of the materials, the tools are sourced locally and what percentage is important? Uh, the reason why I ask this is just to know the local content component in any IoT project, so to speak. What are your take? Sadly, in our market, we, we, we've not seen um, the kind of progress we expect. And that's, be, that's because we have a, a gap. We have, we have the talent gap. And also building hardware, it's one of the, the most difficult thing about IoT itself, you know. You can easily it itinerate around softwares, but I hardware demands a lot of itinerations, a lot of um, piloting, and that's quite tough for, for, uh, for a market like, like ours that is still um, growing. I, I can tell you that um, we do not have the capacity to build hardware solutions at this moment in time, but I can tell you that we have skilled hands who can build IoT software applications you know, and, and, and at the same time too, the key challenge is for us to being to look at how do we domicile the building of hardware itself, you know, and that's what we hope to see as we build the necessary infrastructure to drive the next phase of this technology. Okay, uh, thanks for being honest with that question. You know, I, I also get to worry about what we can do to ensure that we bring more hardware innovations uh, and keep them in the country. But, but, but you know, one of the uh, articles I read that, read that you published that sort of for this interview was the one around the LPG industry. Just sh share a bit about that. Okay, right now in our market, LPG is dominated by road streets or roadside sellers who constitute 30 to 40% of the distribution channel. They dominate the distribution channel to the end users. The conversation I had with the clients was, we understand you do those things, you do research around technology, your partners build IoT applications and other technology solutions. We want to build the next generation infrastructure to deliver LPG to residential areas. And we started having that conversation and we realized that some of the cylinders in the market are five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old cylinders in the market. And one of the issues we have in our market is leakages of cylinders, cylinders, which basically exposes people to fire outbreaks, explosions and all that. But what the IoT device sensors have been able to do is to capture that data enabling us to have insights around usage, you know, enabling us to address leakages, enabling us to look at, to peg usage at certain points, 10%, 50%, that streams that data and enables us to look at how do we, you know, meet that end consumer's need, or in some virulent cases, how do we aggregate certain consumers and deploy LPGs to them efficiently? And that's, you know, became a very fantastic use case. And over time, what we realized is this is doable, and you know, we, we ended up, you know, start working on this thing. And it's been exciting. And suddenly we saw new bank energy in the market doing the same thing. And it got us excited. And what, what, I, what I would say now in this times, you know, these are amazing times to deploy IoT solutions. But the key factor is we need to narrow it down to specific use cases. We need to be narrowed as to what pain points we're addressing. That's key to success of IoT deployment. Okay, finally, Caesar, uh, tell me the sort of challenges that you are facing and how you intend to ensure that this industry becomes commercialized, if I may use that word. Okay, I, I would like to see I would like to see regulations around um, IoT platforms. You know, the bulk of this data it's um, ferried overseas, and we'd like to begin to see how government applies certain data regulation rules in our market. We'd like to domicile data in our market. We like to begin to see conversations around specific use cases for like the LPG we're seeing that, you know, that is raising a lot of dust around how we can efficiently bring LPG to end users. I would like to see beyond regulations, I'd like to see government's commitment, commitment to enable us have, you know, how their development capacity itself. And maybe certain, certain parameters of the devices can be locally built because we do not really need to depend on China for everything. We can be to be in capacity, but first of all, you know, training our, our local our workforce, upgrading our, our local workforce, so we can begin to domicile this technology in-house and begin to innovate in that regard. 
Cesar, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, see you, Agbata. Nice to meet you again. As you've heard from the founder of Nanosecond Technologies, Cesar Keduro, IoT can bring about immense benefits to some sectors of the economy. However, what matters to a lot of Africans is the direct impact such emerging technologies can have on their daily lives and existence. Interesting to see how much of an impact IoT can make in Africa. That's our show for today. Remember, we live on social media at Tech Trends TV. You can watch these and previous editions of the show on Channels TV, YouTube, or CFABlog.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukameka Agbata. Yeah.